Could Ali be the prototype? Throughout our time in Playcare, we've been guided by Ali to help take down Catnap and the prototype. He's given us keys to each building, knows the location of the generators, sometimes even the toys, knows about how Catnap became the monster he is today, including the shrine that he made for the prototype, despite it being in a cave, likely with zero cameras around. And to top it all off, we haven't even seen this kid. But here's the thing, not once did Ali introduce himself as an orphan of Playtime Co. or even a kid for that matter. So the only thing we can go off of is his voice. But even then, there are some things about his voice that sticks out to me, along with some other things. But with all of this mystery shrouded around this child, is it possible that Ali could be evil? Or even worse, is Ali the prototype? Well, before we start to judge whether or not he's on our side, or if he's not what he presents himself to be, there's a couple of questions that I know is on everyone's mind. The first is, how does Ali have so much knowledge about play care? It's implied by Ali's voice that he's just a child, meaning that there's a chance that he was an orphan, a part of play care. But here's the thing. We returned to Playtime Co. in 2005, and we left Playtime Co. 10 years before this, so 1995. We don't know Ali's age, but if we were to stick with the assumption that he's an orphan, we have to look at the age of the other orphans, more specifically their date of birth. But hold on, the only known date of birth regarding the orphans is Theodore Grambo, and he was born in the year 1983, making him 12 years old before he was turned into catnap. It's unlikely that Playtime Co. would experiment with an orphan who was extremely underage, like under 12 years old, and even if they did, they would sound a lot older than Ollie 10 years later. But what if Ali was two or three years old when the hour of joy happened and he managed to survive all the way up until we came back, making him 12 to 13 years old. That is pretty much impossible. There is no way that Ali made it this far by himself and managed to learn almost everything there is to know about play care during that whole time frame. All of the experiments have been starving at this time, and it's very likely that Ali has been too. So for us to figure out how Ali has so much knowledge about play care, we might have to ditch the fact that Ali is even a child. And maybe, just maybe, we might have to ditch the fact that Ali is even human. And this leads me to my second question that you might have also had throughout the time of interacting with Ali. Why does he talk in such a weird way? If you listen to almost every piece of dialogue Ali has, there's always this unnatural up pitch in his voice, almost like someone trying to mimic a child the best they can and honestly they're not doing a good job at it and overall he just has some weird choices of dialogue like listen to this it seems like poppy explained everything now and she turned on the dome's backup power you should be able to find a big power cord somewhere around the porch grab it and plug it in underneath the statue hey did you see the shrine if you thought that was terrifying just wait until you see the real thing. Wait a minute, wait a minute, back it up. Just wait until you see the real thing? Has Ali seen what the prototype looks like? He wouldn't have said that if he had no idea what his appearance was. So how has he even seen him? We'll get to that in just a second. But Ali is just way too enthusiastic considering the environment that we're in. And even when Poppy's talking to us, there's always this sense of cautiousness sprinkled into it. But that's barely there for Ali. But enough about how he talks, let's talk about when he talks. It becomes a common staple that Ali's main dialogue starts when you're in the center of play care, and that doesn't really change. But in the beginning of chapter 3, Ali is talking with us shortly after the train crash, as well as when he's guiding us on what to do in the gas production zone. Later on in Home Sweet Home, Ollie's heard over the phone telling us to run, and then we see Catnap quickly hiding in the shadows behind us. But I'm led to believe that this was part of the hallucination that we experienced after inhaling the red smoke. The main driving force behind me thinking this is that we never actually do run, and after this moment, we never actually encounter catnap face to face, and we only encounter a nightmarish hallucination of Huggy Wuggy. And even after that, we wake up still inside of Home Sweet Home. And if catnap was actually inside of Home Sweet Home, he would have killed us while we were passed out. So that makes Ollie's warning very likely to have been fake. So I'm not going to count this one as Ali talking.
talking to us outside of the center of play care. But he does talk to us again right after we enter into the school. But before we venture off deeper into it, he lets us know that we won't be able to communicate with us on this side of the dome and to be careful for Mr. Light before the audio abruptly cuts out. And after dealing with Mr. Light, we end up wandering into the playhouse, which we can guess is still on the side of the dome that Ollie can't connect to. As right when we escape from the many smiling critters and the bigger version of Dog Day, Ollie immediately starts to ask if we're okay. Hey, are you alright? No ouchies or lost body parts? No ouchies or lost body parts? Yeah, nah, this gotta be an imposter. Plus, it really just sounds like Ali is trying his absolute best to sound glad that we're okay, almost as if he secretly wanted us to be killed in there. Here is where things get a little suspicious, as when we enter the counselor's office, we stop hearing from Ali, even though Catnap was in here and attacked us, and he didn't even warn us about Catnap being here. Yeah, he was talking about how Catnap lives for the hunt and the fact that he lurks in every shadow, but I think it's weird that a upon entering the offices, we don't hear from him at all anymore. It's only until right after we leave the offices that we get a call from Ali and he doesn't even question what happened to us and immediately lets us know that something has gone wrong and we have to plug the cord from the counselor's office into the sockets underneath the statue. Something's gone wrong. Grab the cord from the counselor's office and plug it in underneath the statue. We need to reach 100%. Now, it's very likely that he didn't know we were attacked by Catnap, but it's extremely suspicious that Ollie stopped mentioning Catnap right after he started to pop up more. And I want you to remember what Ollie says after we plug in the cord, because this is very important for what happens next. Now take that huge battery to the gas production zone so we can get out of here. After this, Ali tells us to take the large battery to the gas production zone so, and I quote, we can get out of here, which again is extremely important. But as we approach the battery socket, Catnap enters the room from a small door on the right, almost as if he were expecting us, and then we begin to run from him via an elevator. And after arriving in the safe room, we have to fend off Catnap for five minutes while he tries to get in. And after finally defeating him with the green hand from the grab pack being overcharged, the proto Type comes down through the hatch in the ceiling and Catnap begins to pray to him, not dying from our attack. But suddenly, the prototype plunges his hand into Catnap, killing him instantly, and brings him up into the hatch with it. But after all of this, from finally diverting the red smoke to meeting up with Poppy and ending the chapter off with the nastiest cliffhanger of 2024, we don't even hear from Ali once. And I'm led to believe that this was intentional. But here's what's the most confusing about all of this. After leaving home sweet home, we're attacked by Kissy Missy and Poppy lets her know that we didn't do anything wrong and that we're here to help. But she also says this. I'm glad that Ollie could help you get this far. He's the reason we found you at all. Okay, so Poppy has some sorts of interaction with Ollie. We know that. But after Poppy shows us the Hour of Joy, she says that they killed everyone. Don't you think it would make sense that she says something relating to Ollie being a survivor of the Hour of Joy at some point in the game? But since she doesn't, then that means Ollie wasn't a part of the Hour of Joy and he's in Playtime Co. some other way. He couldn't have entered Playtime Co. after everything happened because of all the knowledge she has. He couldn't have been part of the Hour of Joy in any way because even if he was, he would definitely still not be a child. Plus, Poppy said that they killed everyone. The only option we have left is that Ali is not who he's leading us on to be. And not only do I think that Ali isn't even human, but with everything I've laid out on the table, it's very possible that Ali is the prototype in disguise, impersonating a child in some random location in play care with access to all of the keys and knowledge of the dome. Just think about it for a second. Let's say that Ali was some child. How in the world would he have gotten himself in some secured location where he has all eyes on us while we're in the main part of play care, is able to send us large batteries and keys whenever we need them, knows the lore about some characters even before they were toys, and with all that mystery, he somehow managed to have some sort of relationship with Poppy who doesn't give us any details regarding Ali even once. It makes me a bit skeptical about whether or not Poppy 
Ruby's on our side, but more on that in the next theory. But what do you think about Ali? And why is it that he has so much knowledge and we never even get to see him? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and click on this video right here.